We waiting on you. You give me the cue. We ready. One, two, two. <clears throat> TFWIRadio.com. It's another amazing Thursday. And listen, I don't know about you, but I struggle with forgiveness, okay? That's not my thing. I hold grudges real big. But my special guest today, she says that forgiveness is exactly what we have to do. Okay, you may know her as the Grammy Award winning artist of the Dynamic Sister Duo. Or you could know her from her reality TV show, or you could be just like me, and she's been your Christian homegirl in your head for a <laughs> long time. Ladies and gents, live with Miss T, Miss Tina Campbell. What's going on, baby girl? How are you doing? I'm good. Listen, I'm excited. Can I I'm tell you excited. why I'm excited? Why are you excited? Because when I turned on Fox One today, we had matching <laughs> handles, and then I started telling everybody, I called my own girl, I said, Danielle, yeah, see, we friends for real. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the friendship thing. That's what they do. Yes, <laughs> Because I done heard you give your whole dissertation. Her new song, I ain't doing all that. But the name of the new song, so let's go. I mean, go. it convicted me for sitting in because you know, I got a special situation that I'm holding on to that, even uh, though I am in a season of kumbaya, you know, trying to release. I am in a season of kum, kum I'm in a season of kumbaya. The woman said I'm in a season of kumbaya. You know, just like. Okay, now just stop and let that bear me, okay? Kumbaya. Okay. Where we I'm at? trying to get along, you know, I'm trying to forget. But, but, but it, for me, it's hard to do, but you say it's not that hard. Tell us about it. Let me tell you something. So this single is my life, like, first of all. Like, I ain't just singing no song. This is my life. I don't think anybody did anger, resentment, bitterness, and all of that more than me. If y'all watch me, y'all see how I get down. Whatever I do, I do it entirely. I don't do nothing halfway. If I like you, I'm all the way with you. And can't nobody take me off of you but you. You know what I'm saying? If I don't like you, I'm going to just, listen, God bless you, but I'm not, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just, I'm fully committed. And so I'm fully committed to the devil for a little while. Mm -hmm. You want anger? I got anger. You want bitterness? I got bitterness. You want homicide, suicide? I got all of it. Let's just do all of it. I ain't going to rock with Jesus. I'm going to rock with you all the way. And I was like, this is the worst thing I ever did. I'm over here miserable. Every single time, you know, I'm having a good day, the thought of whatever it was that happened has to take me back to having a bad day. I'm going to tell you what helped my forgiveness. Okay. Because the, for, the forgiveness concept, first of all, is God's way. That's number it one. It is. I'm going to call myself a Christian, but don't never do what Jesus Christ did. So that's number one, right? Ouch. But number two, what what I was dealing with this whole idea of I'm entitled to this. Like, you know, <clears throat> look what happened to me. Everybody saw it. I'm entitled to this. I can qualify and justify why I feel the way I feel. Uh, feel. But I hated feeling that way. Mm -hmm. I hated those triggers that made me feel that way. Mm -hmm. That made me remember that. That took me back to that place of hurt. Not just with my husband. Whatever management stole from me. Whoever it is that, you know what I mean? You know, put something out on my name that wasn't right. Whatever friend betrayed me. Whoever it was is in my face smiling one minute. Right. Talking all of this stuff. It's like whenever I'm able to retain all of that, it makes my good day a bad day. Mm -hmm. It makes my happy moment a bad moment. It takes whatever is right and turns it into something that's wrong. Even for a moment, I said, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. I don't like looking at pictures and always being to remember, being able to remember what was going on during. Like you supposed to be reflected. Now you frowning. Now you got an attitude. Now you snapping at everybody. I was like, I don't like this. Right. So God, what I gotta do? He was like, give it to me. Listen. So you gave it to him. And listen, let me tell you, Tina, why we love you so much. In case you didn't know, because you were real with us. And so many times in this day and age when we, we do have the cell phones, we have we have the Snapchat, we have the Instagram, we have the live, and we're supposed to be showing people the real, the reality of it all. Right. But most of us don't. We still, you know, got Oh, the... baby, we threw a lens. We threw a lens. <laughs> you done put on this lens. You ain't never that pretty. You ain't never that pretty and you ain't never that perfect. You been using filters. <laughs> With the, with the, yeah, but listen, that's how connected I am to all of that. You got all these filters on and everything, and we all filter ourselves. We're all giving some, you know, whether somebody goes, other people are like, oh, I'm keeping it real. No, you're not keeping it real. You're keeping it ignorant. You're keeping it obnoxious. You're keeping it unkind, and it's not cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we're just, everybody has this persona or this filter or this created version or whatever. I don't like fake. Okay. First of all, now I'm trapped by this character I done created. I don't want to do that. I just want to be who I am on my good days, on my bad days, and then I take responsibility for it. And if I change, I'm okay with the fact that you used to like me but you don't like me now because I like me and it's my life I ain't living it for you so back to what you were saying about the I gave it to God oh you just gave it to God it was just easy no it wasn't easy mm -hmm. but if I didn't give it to God I would still have it which means I would still be bitter 
I will still be insecure. I'll still be checking for everybody who this happened with, looking over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I will still be wondering, is my husband the good man that he is because he used to be a horrible dude? I would always be subject to what happened in the past if I didn't let go of it. So now I just use it as a reference for a testimony because my test became a testimony. The devil tried to rip my, my life apart, man. I was going to kill me, the kids, everybody. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, I was like, one of these days, like when I was, you know, plotting my own death and everything, I um, I sat down and I said, dang, the devil got me. Yeah. He just took me down. I'm sitting up here plotting to take my children out, plotting to take these four chicks out and their kids and their mamas and all this kind of stuff. I'm literally plotting this. This is my life. How did I become this? And then I be talking to God like, why you let me become this? Like, I don't want to be this girl, but if you don't help me, I'm hurting, man, and I don't want to live. But if I'm going, they going. So I was just, it was bad. And I was like, I don't want to live like this. This is miserable. Not that I want to be some big super saint. I want to be happy. Right. I want to live my life. You know what I'm saying? I want to grow from whatever it is that went on. I was like, if I can't die wrong, I want to live right. So I would just talk to God. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, just help me. Like you sitting up here parting red seeds and stuff and making water come from out of nowhere and food come from out of nowhere. You can do stuff like take this take this right. broken life and make my test a testimony. And then you know I talk a lot. If you change my life, I ain't never going to shut up. But if you don't change my life, it's going to be bad and you're going to look bad because everybody knows I'm a Christian. Right. So I talked to God and I just kept saying, help me. And all this foolish stuff I'm talking to you about, I was doing all that while I was on a fast. After fast, after fast, after fast. I was trying. Come on. I was trying. I was running to God. I was, you know, cursing one minute, praying the next minute, stabbing one minute, bowing the next minute. You know what I'm saying? Just, I was just, I was, all, I was a nut. And I knew I was crazy. I was crazy and I knew it. And I felt like, I was like, I was like, dang, I'm real crazy. I ain't all the way here. And I, I was like, the devil got me. And I, I was just like, just he gonna, I was like, he ain't supposed to have me. I'm a Christian. Right. I'm yours, God. The devil ain't supposed to take me down. Right. This ain't how it's supposed to be. I was like, what I gotta do? He was like, give me your stuff, Tina. I was like, but it's mine. He was like, give me your stuff. I was like, but it's mine. It happened. He was like, do you want it to keep happening? Mm -hmm. This is how you get free. Yeah. Give it to me. Y'all got to know when y'all look at me, I'm free. Am I perfect? No. Is everything in my life what I want it to be? No. But I'm free. Because I let go of the things that kept me back. Listen, you're free and your smile is gorgeous. Let me see. I just want my teeth. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, you can do all things. <laughs> can you give me a smile like Tina? I want a Thank smile you. like Tina. But listen, I love what you've done because you took heartbreak and heartbreak. You took tests and you turned it into your story and you've been delivering people. You're now not only are you a Grammy Award winning singer, you're an author. You know, you've done so many things. Did you see in the beginning it looking your end looking like this you talking about like why, when i went through what i went through yeah. with it baby let me tell you something <laughs> i said ain't no way this gonna ever end up right everything working out for your good it's nothing good that could ever come out of this how you gonna fix this guy how right. you gonna get them chicks up out of my story how you gonna make me not feel what i'm feeling how you gonna undo what happened and so i'm thinking with my finite mind I'm talking to the God who created the mind. The brain was his idea. Right. He don't need my help figuring it out. So I'm trying to figure it out. And because I couldn't figure it out, I reduced God to someone like myself and thought he couldn't figure it out. But you looking at my life now. I'm with the same man. Love him. He's my favorite human being. Awesome. He is not what he was. He doesn't care that I ever do an interview. He will never ever sing his praises. He's not telling everybody how changed and transformed he is. He's just being it. He told me what he was going to do to get me back. He did it and he got me back. I'm wrapped around the man's finger. I ain't never gonna leave him. I'm gonna be his woman until I die. I would change everything in my life. Walk away from everybody but God for this man. But guess what I had to do first? I had to forgive him. I had to allow God to change my heart and change my perspective. Because if my perspective never changed, I would always see him for what he did. What if everybody looked at us like our worst day? What if everybody reduced us to what we did that we don't want nobody to know? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We are not our mistakes. We make mistakes, but we are not our <clears throat> mistakes. And so then I go marry somebody for money and sex. Right. And the one who I really love, it just, you know, it never works out. And so I'm living the rest of my life like half cool, you know what I mean, putting on a mask, acting like everything is good, rocking big diamonds, going on trips, but I'm not with the person that I love, all because my pride and ego said, I hate you, I don't hate you, mm -hmm. I hate this. 
I don't, I don't not like you. I just don't like this. The so situation. Like, Come on. Yeah. So I was like, God, you know, help me with this. This man ain't what he did, but can you help me? Because I want to kill him. You know what I mean? And if you help me, maybe I can love him again. And I did not see the end this way initially. Mm -hmm. But I started speaking what I wanted it to look like. And I started praying what I wanted it to look like. And that's in a book called I Need a Day to Pray that I thought was just my journal of God. Right, you tell us about that. I'm living it. Wow. I'm living. I got a song on my album that people haven't heard yet. And I give you an album today too. Cool. But it's called We It's called We Living. I would I wanna talk about We Living because baby. see I saw you you was I said, that, yeah, that, that, I know you was here, you was here, I saw you and your daughter and all the, I'm on Instagram and y'all right. start the hashtag, we live in challenge, uh -huh. and let me tell you, it was very hip, because we don't get to see God, you know, you're a gospel artist, you know, sometimes, what is this, what is, what is that, I, I have no idea, you know, we, we don't get I to see it, and I loved it, and the smile, and then I, what I love more about it is you're doing it with your, your children, wait, but first, speaking of your children. Santana was in your bed. Is Santana feeling better? Okay, but I'm gonna tell you, okay, I felt bad about the little, everybody who, who follows me on IG, <laughs> follow me on IG and just follow the Santana story because Santana's always doing something wonderful. My little wonderful five-year-old, he is a leader. I yeah. promise to God, I believe, I can't say I promise to God, God said don't swear, but I believe with everything in me that this little boy is gonna be like the president of the, of the U.S. or something what? like that. He's oh, a leader. Sir. But you ain't a leader, right? You ain't. The, I'm the leader right now. He doesn't know that he's not in charge, so he just lives his life doing what he wants to do. He's not malicious. He's not like this. Not. He's the most nurturing and loving and intelligent little boy. But he kind of does what he wants to do, but not from an angry, even place. So you know, half the time he don't cry. He ain't sad. He ain't crying. When he do it, he's acting a fool. Uh -huh. So this night he wants to be sick. You sick in 17 different places? Like everything hurts. <laughs> So I was just like, I don't even, I'm tired and I don't feel like his presentation. Go on, you want to lay in my bed? Go on and lay in my bed and go to sleep. <laughs> now I got to wait for him to go to sleep because I still got to work. And if I come in there, he's going to stay up. You done kicked me out of my room. You five and I'm 40. <laughs> How I get punked by this little boy? Mm -hmm. So yeah, Santana, he, um, he, he makes my life a little bit interesting. But he actually was... He had, I think he was sick because the next day he he threw up. And I don't know if he threw up because he was like sticking his fingers in his mouth. Because <laughs> you never know. Or if he was actually sick. And I was like, oh, my mommy, sorry. So I felt like a dog a little bit. And you was holding him and, and you I let him be in the bed. I, and I, oh, of course. You know, I, I, I fussed about it afterwards, but I sure did. And he let, and even though he's such a big, he's the roughest little boy that I, he is so a man's child. He And his father is his favorite person in the whole world. He comes downstairs, hi, daddy, how you doing, man? He daps them all up. And I say, good morning, Santana. He don't say nothing. I said, oh, really? Wow. Oh, but you don't get his grand presentation to your daddy, though? So, you know, he loves his dad. He's a rough little boy. But when it comes time for bedtime or he heard, he'll let me rock him, kiss him, and all that. And I love it. Oh, wow. Now, let's talk more about family because okay. we've gotten the privilege over the past five years of getting in. We thought we knew your family. We thought right. we knew the Campbells. We thought we knew oh, all of the no, sisters. Baby. And no. now we realize... Man, y'all cut down like me and Michelle. That's Michelle was my little sister. <laughs> me and Michelle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Listen. Michelle says I'm Tina, though. She does. she's Erica. Even though I, I'm the oldest. But right. it, that's the way we, we do it. She's, she's, she says that I'm like you. And right. then our birthdays are really close together. You're born on the first. I'm born on the third. So it kind of makes us together in harmony. But let's talk about the family. You start. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Let's talk about the show. Because oh. I will say I'm one of the viewers and the family. Fans of the show, okay. and I'm, I'm hurt. Okay, I want you. I, per, I feel. I personally hurt, but I'm gonna try to forgive you because you said I'm Please. supposed to do it. Exactly. God, just be the, the, the Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about the reality TV show. We've gotten to see the ups, the downs, yeah. the babies. We've gotten, you know, two babies out of the show. It, right. We we we've saw the good healings and all different types of things. <laughs> I can't cut to an end. Baby, at some point in time, somebody got to graduate. We can't stay in high school for 16 years. I'm just saying. It's time to go. I love the show. I ain't going to lie. I'm grateful for the show. I, season one through three, I loved it. Season four and five was bogus. Season six is back to the real stuff. And, you know, it doesn't show perfect life. It shows what what it looks like. Oh, you're a Christian? This is what you really do? Let's see what that looks like when you're at the crib with your kids. Let's see what it looks like when you go through challenges with your husband. Let's see what it looks like when you get into the negotiating room. Let's see what it looks like when you turn on the businesswoman. Do you, are, you, are you a shark? 
or is this faith does all of that kind of mm -hmm. apply so we're we've been able to uh, apply our faith to countless situations family challenges and all that like death and everything you know you, we could, you, you could doubt leave God right. all this but we have been able to show people what it looks like to actually walk by faith to actually live this Christian Christian life and so I'm grateful for that opportunity again I didn't like all that editing of season four and five that got all created but we've gotten back to the good stuff and even though people are able to see our imperfections you got imperfections I don't care how holy great and wonderful you are you got imperfections right. and if you're sitting there judging me first of all I don't care that's number one number like two anybody who sits up and judges someone all day you are not a happy person you are not happy and if you are so right why don't you allow your rightness to influence somebody uh, and not your mouth stop reporting right. on it shut up okay and just be amazing if you're so amazing if you're so amazing let your amazingness extend itself to me but, but shut your mouth though you know what I mean so you know who cares who doesn't like it and you know people have opinions and all of that kind of stuff we have a bunch of supporters and a bunch of lovers but people you know people want to make everything unholy people want to make everything bad and it's like life does not look like Sunday morning every day mm -hmm. you can walk by faith love God and be a true Christian and follower of Jesus Christ but you're dealing with some regular situations and it right. doesn't look like I opened the Bible and I said hallelujah and all went away mm -hmm. and so we're okay <laughs> with being honest and being vulnerable and letting people take it however they've taken it and I believe God has used our show to um, express his glory mm -hmm. to bring families together to help people fight for their marriages to give you know parents perspective on you know making their children important even though their lives are busy um, familial challenges and things of that nature sisters and stuff that don't get along it's a bunch of sisters that's talking to each other that hadn't talked to each other for years because of the way me and Erica get down you know what I mean people see us stopping all of that stuff that we doing running around with our kids acting like servants it's like oh if you if you're influenced by us and you see that that's an influencer so I'm grateful to God for every positive influence he has allowed us to make and i believe this season people are going to see the evolution of mary mary oh, that's which is awesome. is both of us and it's us individually i ain't tied to erica at the hip i ain't married to her i'm one with teddy i ain't one with e oh. you know what I'm, let's, come on now <laughs> i love it i love it you let's, you let's, experience that. let's talk about erica because mm -hmm. erica this morning said she gave us this great attribute to have to have a, she i love my sister i love the way she Listen. says sister my sister, my Listen. sister, that's my sister. But she told us, don't believe the hype, that Mary Mary Man. is is will always be Mary Mary, will always be together, we're going to always do this. And then she said that you guys are just discussing the right timing of the album. So is right. the right timing like 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. or is it just like we, we, we don't know? Okay, that, I like the way you just you went when you went on and got that in there. So listen, real talk. <laughs> Mary Mary is not dead. Mary Mary was never dead. Right. And the show to make things more exciting, want to act like Mary Mary ain't coming back together. Mary Mary, why you watching the show? Saying why y'all breaking up? You watching our concert, dummy? Right. Hey, and you just had a you like, you guys released a single together in 2016. Yeah. So, like we're doing all kind of stuff together. We just haven't made a new album because when you make a new album, Mary Mary schedule y'all think me and erica working we got it from the group we came from we work hard we go to every country we go to every radio station we go to every state we go to the church we go to the club we go everywhere and we create an awareness of this music if we think it's so amazing we want the world to hear it and it makes it keeps us extremely busy so we're trying to figure out how do we organize these busy individual lives because we're not those two young ladies that had just got married didn't have no kids and we just fully committed to just Mary Mary so it's like how do you juggle all of this and Mary Mary deserves our undivided attention mm -hmm. we cannot do that right now we're too busy so, you know, we're going to make an album when we have the time to promote it, the time to tour together, the time to do stuff. And I don't have the do the timeline for you, but I do know. I mean, I, you know, I was going to ask. Yeah. I mean, but it's going to happen. You, you, you might have had it. It might have just occurred to you. You know, she said, you know, she was looking for the time. By the time you got out the car, y'all could have got it. I done already told myself up giving timelines. So I ain't never giving no more. <laughs> I do know we gotta make another. We're gonna make another album. Like you know, um, we're gonna make one. Erica has another album that that I, I have an album coming out right now right. Like, in a week, September September twenty ninth, next Friday. Erica has a new single out. She's putting an album out next year. I was like, Erica, I know you think we can all put albums out in the same year and put an album out with Mary Mary. I was like, I'm not doing that. So when you have had an opportunity to do what you're gonna do, and then you can give Mary Mary more of your undivided time, undivided uh, attention. 
I will do the same thing and then we'll go wholeheartedly. But right now we can't do that. It's too much. I got too much stuff for my husband. I got too much stuff as a solo artist. I got too much stuff as a business executive, uh, just a, a music e executive. I have too much with my web series. I got too much for my children. I can't give Mary Mary the time that it needs. And I'm not going to not do that group justice. Like God has given us a major platform. I'm not going to go out there and like, you know, not take full advantage of it. And if I went now, I wouldn't be able to take full advantage of every opportunity that God places us in front of to just, you know, express him and draw people to him because I because I'd be distracted by all this other stuff so I'm gonna just wait until the distractions have slowed, okay. slowed down a little bit and we're gonna get at night okay you what, you what you want to do is not put any years attached okay. Okay. to the situation because I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Okay, let's talk about, you mentioned the web series. Let's uh -huh. talk about 10 Minutes with Tina and Teddy. First of all, I think it's awesome what you Thank guys you. are doing, that you guys have now decided you're going to sit together. You're gonna, we're united. For, we're together. We right. love each other. You right. know, we sit here and we compliment each other. The last the last episode was about forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiving. You've been watching my and, Listen, oh. I do my research, okay? Oh. I, I, I'm a professional, okay? This is live with Miss T, okay? I have all of the tea, Tina. You know, that's what I'm going to do. I have all of the tea. Tina, I just pass it around. <laughs> Bless you. Serve it. Just like that. <laughs> Bless you. Listen, so let's talk about the last episode was about forgiving and forgetting. Yes. Tina, mm -hmm. you said you gave it to God. I mm -hmm. like that answer. Mm -hmm. But somebody that's watching, that's not helping them. Uh -huh. So I need to know more. I need to know that conversation that said that God, I won't forget. Like how? Well, see, if I give people my process, they gonna go acting a fool like I acted a fool. I ain't giving you my process because okay. <laughs> you might think that you should go do that, and you might end up dead during my process. Like, first of all, I had a whole gang of people praying for me. I have a praying family. My family is some true Christians. They didn't hate Teddy. They did not help me be a fool. They helped pull me out of my stuff. They wouldn't let me just fall down. I was about to leave that house one day and go kill myself and my mama knew it. She would not. She took them keys away from me and I got them keys back. She sat in that car and she was like, you ain't leaving this house. My family was not about to watch the devil ruin my life. So you, first of all, you need to get some people around you who believe in God, who okay. pray and who can help you out when you can't help yourself. Hey, you so that was number one. Right. Number two, I didn't like being miserable. Every time you talk about whatever reason you have that you entitled to to be unforgiving, they ain't even sorry. So what? They ain't sorry. How about you be sorry that they ain't sorry, but you still go on with your life so you can be free? If every time you remember who raped you, you get sad. If every time you remember who raped you, you can't make love to your current husband. If every time you remember who raped you, you don't trust men anymore. Why do you hold on to the pain of it? And I'm not saying it's easy. It was not easy to let go of this. Okay. But it's possible. The Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. I believed God. I chose to start believing God more than I believed my reality. Because I was like, this ain't nothing. This ain't what I want to believe in anyway. I know it happened. But I choose to believe your Bible. Because your Bible is better than my reality. The stuff you say is better than the stuff that happened to me. You know what I mean? Your perspective gets better results than everything I've tried. And everybody who... You need to resist. You need to do this. Everything I say, y'all all angry. Y'all all bitter. Y'all not free. Y'all all rich and, 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 and famous and successful. And you still ain't happy. Yeah. Why? Because somebody else got the number one spot. Because somebody else had a bigger tour. Because somebody else did a bigger merger. Because like, I was like, you just, you're on the next husband and you still talking about the first husband. Wow. You ain't even happy. Why ain't your new husband mad at you for still, why is your emotions tied to that? I was like, I don't, I know that it's hard to be raped. It's hard to be molested. And to let it go, it's hard for somebody to steal your business idea and they're succeeding and now you're living in an apartment with somebody else and they actually, if the na their name is on the lease. Right. You done lost your everything, they crashed your car, you know what I'm saying, and didn't pay you back. They done took your money out of your savings account and you wanted to help them and they never paid you back. Now you're between a rock and a hard place. Whatever it is, how does it help you to hold on to it? Okay. What is When you hold on to it, what you doing with it? Are you enjoying that wonderful weight? Are you enjoying those thoughts? Are you enjoying those feelings? They the ones that hurt you. Now you the one that's hurting you. Are you as mad at you as you are at them for doing it? Wow. If you don't like what they did, why don't you stop doing it? So again, it is hard to forgive. But just like my song says, it's too hard not to forgive. Because it's harder to stay mid um, bitter, miserable, angry, doubtful, negative, skeptical, bound it's too hard i am back in love with the exact same 
man, he's an amazing husband to me because I had, I chose to, with God's help, mm -hmm. with running to God constantly saying, I don't fell down, give me back up, I don't fell down, help me. I, I fell down, but I chose to take God's perspective. And it allowed me to see that he's not what he did. I'm mad at what he did, but he's not what he did. I have compassion for those women. You somebody side, my husband's sitting up here paid. I'm looking, I got the credit card receipts and everything. He ain't bought you nothing. He ain't took you nowhere. You ain't, how you sitting up here with some man and you can't, he ain't even celebrating you. You trying to be me. You're not trying to ruin my life. You're trying to get the right thing the wrong way. A lot of people do dumb things. Men cheat. Why? Because they're insecure. They're unfulfilled in some area and they want to make themselves feel like they're something. So they go get somebody to scream and holler and make them feel like they're everything. That doesn't mean they're trying to ruin your life. They don't know how to deal with their stuff. I don't know. Their, their failures, their whatever, their insecurities. That's sometimes, that's the thing. People are people who, who are hurting, they hurt people. That's why I was going to kill everybody. Because I was hurting. You understand what I'm saying? So I have a different perspective on people who are broken, who do crazy stuff. Is that like, oh, I want to go take all the killers who molest, molest the children and kill old people and hug mm -hmm. them? I'm not exactly saying that. I got you. But I'm saying that if you don't have compassion to understand that sometimes people's situations and circumstances in life, it extend them to acting in ways that they don't actually agree with. Somebody got to love somebody. The Bible says you don't overcome evil with evil. You overcome it with good. Love is what kills evil. So I tried love even with someone who was the most unlovely to me. And now, this love is popping like crazy. That's uh -oh. awesome. My forgiveness helped him to trust that God had to be real. So my husband ran to God and said, help me be everything I told this woman I was going to be. Now the man is everything he told me he was going to be, everything I thought I might have wanted, everything I need, everything I could dream, imagine everything I desire, post, present, and future. This man is it. So are we going to get baby number six? Baby, let me tell you something. We're going to work on it, but we ain't going to get a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. I'm not after that Santana. You see, he got my room tied up. No, right. ain't, no, no more children. Okay, okay. See, you took me right out the spirit with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to wrap up this interview, Tina. They're telling me we got to wrap it up. But um, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. And thank you for just being real. Hey, you guys, the We Team <laughs> the last season. You gonna oh, be Mary, Mary on oh, WeTV. I gotta find me something else to watch. <laughs> no, it's gonna be all right. Gotta find me something else to watch. Okay, yeah. Roger, watch, oh, watch me, watch reruns of it though. <laughs> Will, <laughs> cause I got, I got some favorite episodes. As we was watching it, getting through, I started laughing. Next time, I'm like, what are you laughing at? I, there's certain parts of it I like, especially my favorite part. Okay, you. The season, you was doing your first concert, you was signing the autographs, mm -hmm. and you was praying. You know, Father God, let me just, and I thank you for being yes. Go in, Tina. That's what I was right there. Oh, I, I, I was, and you just started going in. You know, I should watch the show. You was in there, and I was like, that, that's how grateful you need to be. You better do it. That's, that was me. That was Real, me. What that season was this? This is the season. The, the season when we started to right after everything had happened. This is season. Oh. This is six. We on five. So when okay. you did, it was, so what's some good yeah, stuff in season five? Yeah. Okay, I got to go back and watch it. it. it okay, we're good. You know, to God be the glory. It was some things that made let us know that you was real. I'm mad at y'all. Well, yeah, she, she real. She, she real. is. Is, 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 yeah. is. So the album drops. It's still personal. September the 29th. That's next Friday. And the reality TV show starts on the 28th. That's my daddy's birthday. Shout out to my daddy, y'all. Happy so, birthday, daddy. Let, let, oh, wait. I'm going to ask you this quick because my daddy kind of mad at me. One more question. So this is going to make me, you know, get back in. <laughs> let me help you out. What, what's your favorite hymn, Tina? Uh, my favorite hymn, um, <clears throat> you know what? I don't know if this is it, but this is what comes to mind. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, and I am worn through the storm, through Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on. See, thank you. See, that's why we home, girl. See, they're going to get me back in there. I am awesome. in. I'm going to be able to eat a lot of free food out of my mom and daddy's refrigerator. Oh, she that you. <laughs> the new single it's too hard not to tina before we introduce the single on our way out listen some say it's hard to forgive i say it's too hard to stay mad angry bitter and unhappy insecure remembering what hurt you it's too hard not 
to forgive. Too hard not to, guys. Tina Campbell on live with Miss T on DFWIRadio.com. We'll be back. <laughs>